Welcome again for another Sunset Learning Submitting Made Easy, Part 2. Today we're going to be talking about some information that's a little bit different. We're going to deal with what they call variable length subnet masking. Okay? So if you watch the first video, what you'll see is that it's almost identical to what we did before. It's just going in a one more step. Okay? Recognizing what's actually happening when we start implementing this on our networks. Okay? So the whole point of variable link subnet masking is to be able to go through and make sure that we only have the size of subnet that we absolutely need on each individual location. Okay? So what we're going to be discussing was we're going to discuss the concept of having a corporate headquarters. And at our corporate headquarters, we're going to have two big subnets out over here where we have 250 users on each one of these subnets. Then we're going to have links that go out onto our branch offices, and you're going to see we're going to have three different branch offices that we're going to be utilizing. And each branch office has up to at least 30 users in each branch office. Okay? Likewise, we have these point-to-point -point links in the middle. Right? And we need to have two usable subnets, well, two usable IP addresses, I guess I should say, one on each side of that connection. Okay? So we're looking for two usable addresses for each one of these locations right out over here. And we're going to go through and show you how to do that math. Again, the exact same thing that we did when we were talking about the concept of subnetting to begin with. Okay? So the whole purpose of when we deal with the idea of variable link subnet masking is really to look at where do we have the most amount of users. Okay? So our most amount of users are out over here at the corporate headquarters. At our corporate headquarters, we're looking for the idea of having at least 250 users. Now, last time when we were here, we said the number of usable hosts per subnet could be found out by doing a 2 to the H minus 2. We said we're going to remove our network and our broadcast address for that, H being the number of host bits that we utilize in the subnet maps. Okay? And we need to make sure that 2 to the H minus 2 is greater than or equal to a 250 users that we're looking for. Okay? So in this case right over here, what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, if 2 to the H minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to 250, then 2 to the H has to be greater than or equal to 252. Okay? And we know that as we start dealing with powers of 2, 2 to the 8th power is 256. Okay? So H has to be at least 8 host bits. Okay? So when we start looking at 8 host bits, we said we're going to need 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 host bits. And that's one full octet. So our subnet mask in this case is going to be a 255.255.255. That zero, right, are eight host bits that we're dealing with out over here on the end. Okay, so we're going to go through and come up with some way of being able to do subnet. So let's go through and give us first off kind of an idea of what we're going to use for subnetting to begin with. Let's say that we've got a 172.16.0.0 with a slash 16, and we're going to break this up and utilize these in all of these different networks, part of this same major network, this Class B 172.16 network. Okay? So our first subnet that we're going to see out over here, by utilizing this and stealing, in this case, 8 bits of subnetting, with a 255.255.255.0 subnet mask, means that we're going to use a 172.16.0.0. I, I won't even use the first address. We'll just leave that alone, okay? Uh, a lot of people see that as subnet zero, so they don't use it, especially from Cisco. There's no problems in using that, just to let you guys know. So we're going to use 172.16.1.0 slash 24 network out over here. And we're going to use a 172.16.2.0 slash 24 network down over here, okay? And we've got these two locations already set up and having an IP address for them. Okay. Now, what we're going to do then is we're going to take the next subnet, in this case out over here, is the 172.16.3.0 slash 24 subnet. And we're going to re-subnet that network to be able to accommodate for the 30 usable hosts that we need here at the branch office. Okay. And again, so utilizing our math, we said 2 to the H, to the H minus R2 has to be greater than or equal to a 30 usable host. Okay? So, oops, excuse me. 2 to the H has to be greater than or equal to a 32. Okay? 
So in this case, 2 to the h, what would give us 32? h would be 5 host bits. Okay? So we're going to go through and come up with our 5 host bits. And what does that look like in a subnet mass? A 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 in that last octet. Okay? So this in binary right here is going to be a 224. Okay? So we're going to go through and subnet using a 255.255.255.224 subnet mask, or a slash 27. Okay? And what we're doing in this case is remaining within this one big network, the 3.0 subnet. So our first subnet, when we look at this, we go back to our subnetting. We said, out over here, I'm sorry, I'm running out of room, so I'm going to go through and erase... Subnetting, we did a 256 minus any subnet mask, in this case our 224, comes up with a range in an octet. Our range in this case is going to be 32. Okay? So our first range would be 0 through 31. Our next range would be 32 through 63. Our next range would be 64 through 95. Our next range would be 96 through let's see, 112. Okay? And I could keep on going, but there's really no need to, for, for us to do that, okay? So we're going to start assigning these subnets out over here to each one of our branch office locations that we're utilizing. So this network right here will be a 172.16.3.0 with a slash 27. This network will be, and then, by the way, I've used that subnet, okay? The next range would be a 172.16.3.32 for our network out over here with a slash 27. Our next one would be a 172.16.3.64. With a slash 27. Okay? So what we're going to do now is we're going to go through and take a look at how do we break up another subnet to utilize that for these links in here. Now, in my opinion, I would go through and utilize a completely different subnet. I, I would probably use all of the three X addresses out over here as far as branch office subnets that we're utilizing, okay? So it save all of these other addressing out over here so that we can grow, we have room for growth. I could add in a subnet out over here in another branch office, or one over here, or one over here, or add in a whole new branch office for that matter, okay? So I would start looking into the next subnet that we use. If we used a 172.16.1 right here, and a 172.16.2, I erased it, but it's right here, and the 172.16.3 networks that we were using at all of our branch office. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use the 172.16.4.0 subnet, okay? And we're going to break this subnet up so that we can utilize it for the point-to-point -point links in the middle, okay? And again, in our point-to-point -point links, we need two usable host addresses, okay? So to get two usable host addresses, we said what we need to do is to take 2 to the h minus 2 has to be greater than or equal to our two usable addresses, okay? So 2 to the h has to be greater than or equal to 4. And in this case, h then would be two host bits that we're looking for, okay? And with two host bits, you would have a 0, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, okay? Or in this case... 252 subnet mask, okay? So we're going to break up this big network, the 172.16.4.0, with a 255.255.255.252 subnet mask, okay? So in this case right over here, when we look at that as a 252 subnet mask, let's go back into our math over here. 256 minus my subnet mask, but in this case a 252. going to get you a range of 4. So our first range would be 0 through 3. Our next range would be 4 through 7. Our next range would be 8 through 11. Our next range would be 12 through 15. And I could keep on going, but we're not really going to need that at this point in time, because we really only need three different subnets to support all of our different point-to-point -point links. That would allow me to go through and assign a 172.16.4 dot zero subnet out over here with a slash 30 is what that subnet mask looks like 
of a 255.255.255.252 sudden mask. Okay? So we've used then this segment right over here. And then I would assign a 172.16.4.4 to this network out over here with a slash 30. We have then usable addresses of dot 5 and dot 6. Dot 7 would be my broadcast address on that network. My next subnet, this would be the 172.16.4.8 with a slash 30 on that network. Dot 9, dot 10, and dot 11 is our broadcast address. Okay? So the idea of variable link subnet masking is simply the exact same thing that you're doing as far as subnet in itself. You're just taking a network, our original network, the 172.16.00 subnet, we broke it up to accommodate for our largest subnets that we're looking for, in this case the 250, okay, where we said we assigned the 172.16.1 network and the 172, here I'll write it back up again, the 172.16.2.0 subnet with a slash 24 out over here. Then we took another subnet, the 172.16.3 subnet, and I broke that up to accommodate for our next largest site to, that we're looking for. And in this case, all of our branch offices needing at least 30 usable hosts. Okay? So I broke that up into slash 27s based off of how many usable hosts did we need. Right? And I assigned them subnets to each one of those locations. Then I took another subnet, the 172.16.4.0 subnet. Okay? And I broke that up to accommodate for all of our point-to-point -point links that we have available for us. And essentially, that's variable link subnet masking. It's really just subnetting on a different scale, making sure that we come up with the exact number of host addresses that are needed for each individual subnet. Okay? They also call this classless interdomain routing. Notice that we've got a different subnet mask, even though all of us are a part of the exact same major network of the 172.16.0.0. That's pretty much all I have for you today. I hope everyone helps and has a good time with this video as well. So.